Shalom, everyone. This is Jaina Yisraela with another session of the School of Knowledge, and this is on the Sabbath day. We say shalom, shalom to everyone who has chosen to keep their Sabbath with us. Um, we're going into part two of No New Thing Under the Sun. Uh, last week we dealt with deja vu, where it came from, and we're going to reiterate some things that we dealt with last week. But I want to be able to... Um, Say shalom, shalom to those who are listening under the sound of our voices, that you are, we're glad that you decided to spend your Sabbath with us, and I'm going to open up the screen so that everybody can see my screen, and we're going to go ahead and start the class. All praises. Can you guys see the screen? Let me make sure. Hold on. I think you can. Just a second. All right. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, my goodness. I didn't mean for you to be able to see that one yet. Hold on just a minute. I don't know how that happened there. But um, I, I thank you all for we got, we're got three days away from the end of a, of, a, of a curse and all the things that the Most High has done, all the things that he said he was going to do is just becoming it's a blessing. You know, and we have made it thus far. We've been talking about this for years and years and years. The radio show has been on the air since 2013, and what a blessing it is. You know, um, you, we really don't realize how long we've been doing it until we, we go back and see, you know, uh, exactly what happened and how the most high stepped in on the stage. But he's, we've been doing this a long time. We've been talking about this 400 years for a very long time, and now we're three days away. Nobody would have ever told me that we would get here, but we got here. We made it. We got here, and we are continuing to move. Now, the reason why I had to stop the screen is because I want to start at a certain place, and we're here now. All right, I want to stop at the wisdom of Solomon, of King Solomon. Uh, Very important because when we talk about that there's no new thing under the sun, Somebody would say, well, that's just Solomon's opinion. Who does Solomon think he is? We can't take that as law just because he says there's no new thing under the sun. Solomon was just like any other regular man like you and me. So how can we take that to believe that we all have been born again and that we keep coming back? And as I thought about that, I said, well, we're going to have to get something to be able to show the power that this man had. So I am going to be going into First Kings, chapter 4. We're going to write this down. I hope you have a notebook. Some of you probably got two or three notebooks from all the lessons that we have done. First um, Kings, chapter 4. I want to be able to show who Solomon was. And we're going to start with one verse, and that's verse that we're going to start with the first verse. And it says, so King Solomon was king over all Israel. So what, what that means is that there was not a split yet, that all the 12 tribes were together, and he was the son of Dawi, King David, as some people call him, and he became king once Dawi died. And he was king over all of the 12 tribes, everybody. I want to follow this. Here we go. Now watch. It says, and Yah gave Solomon. I am going to repeat that again. And Yah gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sands that is on the seashore. Now that means that the Most High gave him an understanding about life and about things that most people wouldn't even begin to understand. You know, we always come on this call and we be like, I see things. And I had this dream, and things, strange things are happening. But this man supersedes that by a thousand. Because Yah, because he asked for it. Because he asked for it. Watch. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Now, you know, they say even with some strange folks, they was coming up with all kinds of things. They, they had the Book of the Dead. They tried to understand how what happens after death. They also had light bulbs that they had created back then. In Egypt, had, they had that together. Um, the, um, 
the Temple of Hawthorne. I've studied that before about how magnificent it was and some of the things that the Egyptians were doing with genetics and DNA and all of the stuff that they were doing back in the day. And this scripture says that Solomon's wisdom excelled all of that. Because there is history to show that these people that were in Egypt weren't what we call humans. These people were descendants of the angels. Get into that at another time. But that it says, and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all of the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Heman, and Charcoal, and Darda, the, the son of Machol, and his fame was in all nations round about. Everybody knew about this man. They said, you got this. This man is just something. I mean, the things that he knows is beyond comprehension. Watch. He spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Just start speaking stuff, just giving stuff to the people. They just sat, they sat at his feet, just chewing in every word that he speaks. Watch. He spake of trees from the cedar trees that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He also, he spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fish. Of course, they already existed, but then he was telling more information about how they existed in the composition of their makeup, and he started explaining what, what, how the most high created thing, because he had it like that. Watch. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Any question? Comment. I'm, I'm, we're getting ready to go back over this thing, and I'm getting ready to share some stuff with you that's going to blow your mind. But I want to be able to share that this man had this wisdom that he had. Watch, we're going into 1 Kings chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 1. Watch, it says, And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Most High, she came to prove him with hard questions. She said, I got to go see this guy. I'm, I'm getting ready to go see what in the world is everybody's talking about, about this black man that has this much knowledge about everything. Watch. He said, and she came to Jerusalem with a great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. Watch what she said. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Just to start pouring out everything. Well, well, tell me about this. Well, what about this? Well, how does this work? And where does this go on? Why? And Solomon told her of all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, the meat and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his accent by which he went up into the house of the Most High, there was no more spirit in her. She was in awe. I guess she just stood there and said, wow. Now, this is the queen <laughs> that's got her own kingdom. And she came to Jerusalem because she heard about this man. And when she saw the wealth and the people and the attendants and the servants and the clothes and the gold and the silver and the camels and all and the castle and the temple, she just stood back and said, wow. It took her breath away. And she said to the king, it is a true report that I have heard in my own land of thy act and of thy wisdom. How be it I believe not the word until I came and my eyes 
had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. My wisdom and my prosperity exceed the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are thy servants, which stand continually before thee that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Most High thy Elohim, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Because the Most High loved Israel forever, therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold of spices, very great store, and precious stones. And there came no more such abundance of spices as these, which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Any questions at all whatsoever? Do you realize how rich we were? We were never supposed to be like this. We won. I've heard people say, I've been to England. I've seen the palace that the queen lives in. It is awesome. It was no comparison to his. That was like the project. Happy and rich. Happy and rich. (laughs) Happy and rich. Can you imagine the wealth that we had? We was in our own land. We had our own king. He was he was wealthy, and, and the people heard of his fame. We had our own laws. We was, we was growing our own food. We had our own everything. Everything we had, we needed. We were never supposed to be in this situation like this, never. We were never supposed to experience this ever. We weren't supposed to experience this. All we had to do was be obedient. That was it. All we had to do was be obedient, and we had never knew what this land looked like. We had never understood what it was. We had never understood what it was. This man had so much that she, she, it took her breath away, and she was already a queen. She had people serving her and waiting on her, but it was no comparison to the wealth that was in Israel. Anybody have any questions or comments about it? I know it's a lot to expect and a lot to even try to imagine because we've never seen it before. And guess what? It's a rich folks in this land. It's some rich people in the world, but it's nobody that has ever been as rich as he has. He was. We were happy, rich, and safe. And safe. Yes, ma'am. Happy, rich, and safe. Absolutely. It took her breath away. I just sat here today like, wow. That really must have been something to see. And especially for me because it's a part of my lineage. I'm sitting here like, wow. That chapel had to be awesome to be able to live in. Just to be able to walk around in that castle. It had to be something to be able to have that much wealth. And, and every, your servants was happy. That's our history. <laughs> Most of the servants be complaining, man. We got to go to work. Yo, you got to wipe the tables off of him again. Oh, sure, dude. You got to put it, man. I put his crown on the bed, but I'd be glad. This. They was happy. They said the servants was happy. The cup bearers, everybody was happy. And we can't say that here. And so, so it leaves me. Anybody else have anything you want to say? Here we go. Yeah. The regeneration. So if this man had all of this wisdom, and God gave him all of this wisdom, then it brings us back to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Watch. We're going to start with verse 9. When he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, 
is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Does that make it a little bit more clear for you this week? That you understand now that he sat there and those words fell off his lips and everybody is standing there like we sitting on this phone call in awe when he says that you not knew <laughs> that you was here before and that there's nothing new under the sun. That the Egyptians was making light bulbs back in the at the temple of Hawthorne. And this ain't nothing new that we're doing. It's just new to us because it, it was opened up to our understanding to be able to do this. But there's nobody and nothing on this, on this earth that's new. There's no new invention. Somebody just brought it to the mind of the inventor to be able to put it together, and it was introduced into our generation. Nothing is new. Let me read it again, and we're going to keep going. He said, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. He says, is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. And somebody will look at you and say, no, surely my mother and father didn't just, they just met by chance. Nothing happens by chance. There's nothing on this earth that happens by chance. Everything is predestined and preordained to be. Nothing happens by chance. Everything, like I said before, it's like he wrote a play, and the players have been written, and the names are in the book, and as he comes down, everybody is born at the appointed time to play their necessary part. Watch. It has been already of old time, which was before us. What does that mean? He said, can, is there anything that you could say, see, this is new? He said, it's already been of old times, which was before us. So what does that mean when he says it's already been? It happened before. Yep. Say again. It happened before. It all happened before. It all, all of it has happened before. Brothers and sisters. Say again. So I guess you could say flight as well as space flight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Going up to the moon as well as to Mars and maybe even, even further. Yeah. Oh, I can get into that. I can take you there. In the scriptures, you... absolutely. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Yes, we going. I'm holding on. Here we go. Why? He said, there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Why is it necessary for him to say you won't remember anything if you knew? <laughs> If you're new, there's nothing to remember. Because mm-hmm. it's new to us. It, 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 and guess what? It's new to you, but then is it really because you're still having glimpses of things because you experience deja vu? Mm-hmm. And you're having this, what is that? Oh, I've had it so bad to the point where I've had to stop. Because I felt some energy on me, like, wow. Oh, I've had this. Oh, I've had this conversation with you before. So, sis, are you saying the amount of people that are on the earth is not as is not as many as we think? Because uh, I can't hear you because of the kids. I can't hear you. I was saying, do you think that? the amount of people that are on the earth now, is it not as high as we think it is because we've been here before? I think that the amount of people on the earth for the people who are supposed to be on the earth, and I don't know about the count. I can't tell you about the count. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even begin to, to know that. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because they come up the earth is overpopulated and there's not enough food for poppycock. 
Yeah, that's true. That's the, the science has said that you can fit everybody in the entire world in the state of Texas. They have said that over and over and over and over again. I mean, they, they tell you that in college when you go for a science degree, um, they tell you that uh, you can fit every single person in this world in the state of Texas. But at the same time, they tell you that it's overpopulated, which tells you that they just want to rule the people, and there's too many people for those little bit of elite people that's trying to run everything. Absolutely. Well, the thing is, is they keep confusion in play so you don't know the truth. Remember, uh, their job is to keep separated from Yah. So you can even go online and see that the countries are not the exact sizes that they have them on these so maps. Uh, I believe right that. I believe that. And, and not to mention that everything that we're doing is a, in direct defiance of Yah once you understand how he operates. Everything that we're doing, from the day that we worship to the food that we eat to the clothes that we wear to the gods that we worship to everything that we've learned since we've been in these lands of captivity is in direct defiance of the Bible. But they will have people to believe that the form of worship that was introduced is the way he wants things to be. And that's where you get the pushback from your family members when they say, you done lost your mind. There's something wrong with you. I've been doing this this way for 50 years. And like I said, everybody's getting high off of the energy that, that Yehuda brings when we begin to praise or when we, be, when we come together, but that's written in our DNA that we exuberate that kind of energy, and people believe that that's not. So when you get in a situation like that, and when we're, we're, we're in, a, uh, in, a, in a confined place where we are, and everybody's hallelujah in it, and they scream and holler, it's an energy that exuberates from our DNA that gives us those goosebumps and those goose pimples that, oh, God, is in the place. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Well, not. It's just, you're just feeding off the energy that was written into the DNA of the children of Israel, and, and from that energy, you, you're, you're experiencing that high. But it's not according to the way that he wants it to be. But, but as we began to become, when we began to understand who we are as a people and who we are as a people, he begins to open up your understanding, and he gives you wisdom so that you'll be able to connect the dots. And that's what we're doing today. We're connecting the dots. So as, as King Solomon said, there's no remembrance of, you have no remembrance of the thing, a remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. What I'm hearing from that is that this is a repetitive cycle, that you die and that you're born again, and that you die and that you're born again. Now, how somebody sent me an email. She said, how often does it happen, and how many generations does it happen? And you know, with me and my crazy self, I'm going to go into the Bible and figure out how long they lived back then, because they lived to be 200, 175 years old, blah, blah, blah. And I said, stop. That's something you just want to know. <laughs> I mean, I really was getting ready to go there. And I said, there's some things that you can just tell the person, I don't know, because we don't. Mm-hmm. Now watch. Watch what he said. Now, we in Ecclesiastes chapter 6. I'm going somewhere. I am going over this because I'm about to lead you somewhere that I want you to be able to all go and understand as we flow these in together. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 10. He said, that, and it's still, this is still okay, Solomon now. He said, that which has been is named already, and it is known that it is man. So what he was talking about in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, that thing which has already been shall be again, he's talking about man, the cycle of how we keep coming back over and over and over and over again. We're not talking about reincarnation, because reincarnation is you come back as something else. But regeneration is when you come back with a different flesh. I mean, with a, uh, with another body. Because we know that the Most High pronounced 
from dust thou art, and from dust thou shalt return. So we know that when this body we're in right now gets ready to die, and we, and we die, it goes into the ground and it decomposes. So somebody tell me, if the body decomposes, what comes back? The soul. Oh, the soul. Do you know I heard a Hebrew Israelite teacher that they said ain't no, ain't no such thing as a soul? But we're going to touch on that a little bit later. The soul comes back. And that soul comes back into that womb and is born again, and you come back and you, you, you live this life and this experience, and you be like, I have lived this before. And when you run into other people and you see people and you have that deja vu moment, you be like, we've had this conversation before. And I'm here to tell you, you have. You have. Now, understanding the cycle and how it works, the most I haven't given that to me yet. I'm not, because I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Trust me, I'm on my knees asking, okay, so we come back again, so what happens? How do we live this and where do we live this at? And, and it, has this world already been before, the one we're living in right now? Has this process already worked before? How, how does this work? I'm, I'm, because I got the same mind you guys do. I want to know. Okay, so, so and then, I, then sometimes I say, you yeah, know, just relax. Just enjoy the ride. You may not get all the answers until we get to the wilderness. You may not be able to understand all the answers until the curse. Just relax and, let, and, and absorb the things that he's showing you right now and enjoy those things. But he said in Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 10, that which has been is named already, and it is known that it is man. So we know that once you die, that's not the end of it. You come back. Some people say, do white people come back? And I'm going to ask you the same question. Is there anything new under the sun? No. So they come, everybody comes back. Watch. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. He says, seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? For who knoweth what is good for man in this life all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow? For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Now, my next question is, who are the ancestors? We talked about that last week. We talked about y'all coming down to Mount Sinai, landing on Mount Sinai. And somebody said, landing? What do you mean, landing? He landed on Mount Sinai. And whatever he was in that landed the way he did, it was so big that the whole mountain shook when he landed. Because I know some of you all have been taught that he's a big old puff of smoke and that he's just everywhere, all the place. But we're going to deprogram you if you stay around long enough because that is erroneous teaching. The Most High landed on Mount Sinai, and when he landed, there was a period where Kit Moshe and, and, and some of the others and 78 uh, uh, elders went up on Mount Sinai, and they had lunch with the God of Israel. And he did not come near the 70 angels, I mean the elders, but when they looked up at what he was in, they said it was a vehicle and it was a blue pavement, like a blue sapphire under his feet. I know this is hard for a whole lot of people to take, and this is in the Bible, so we're not going anywhere else. But nevertheless, we, we're trying to find out if we come back again who the ancestors are. So let's go and see what he said. Deuteronomy chapter 29, and when the Most High opened this up to me, I said, oh, verse 1, it says, these are the words of the covenant which the Most High commanded Moshe to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Moshe called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Most High did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land. 
the great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet the, the Most High has not given you an heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. He said, this is the day that he can ready to explain this all to you. I have led, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Watch what he said. Your clothes were not waxing old upon you, and thy shoes is not waxing old upon my feet. Now, I don't know about you, but I got some stuff out of hand about 10, 15 years, and they done dry rotted. Leather stuff. Who, how, can, how can that happen? How can you be in a place for 40 years in the wilderness, in the desert, in the heat, and your clothes don't dry rot, in the sun, and your clothes don't even look old? That shirt and them shoes look new like you just, somebody better speak back to me. Are y'all laughing? <laughs> Why? Are we out there. Can you imagine Oh, yeah, we're out here just enjoying the, tr- the teaching. Yeah. That's, that's correct. What's happening is you, you're making it plain. You're making it too plain, so we can't come up with no... uh uh not. Right. Everything on you still looks fresh like you bought it out the store. After 40... Man, watch, watch. He said, and ye have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Most High, your Elohim. Watch what he said. He says that when you came unto this place, Shion, the king of Hezbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. Do you know those giants? Mm-hmm. The Israelites came out up against them giants? and took them down. That's how we rule. He said that we took that land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and unto the Gadites and to the half a tribe of Manasseh. Took it. Keep, watch what he says. He said, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Watch. Ye stand this day all of you before the Most High, your Elohim, your captains of your tribe, your elders, your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy strangers that is in thy camp, from the hewer of wood unto the drawer of water. He said, even your servants, that thou should have entered into a covenant with the Most High, thy Elohim, and enter his oath, which the Most High, thy Elohim, maketh with thee, this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee an Elohim, as Mm. he has said unto thee. Watch, as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Most High our Elohim, and also with him that is not here with us this day. What does that mean? Wow. Leave that. Those that, are, that weren't born at the time. <laughs> Their descendants. Oh, my God. Do I make this with you? Man, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Watch what he says. Watch. He says, for you know nations which ye passed by, and ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be any among you, man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day 
from the Most High our Elohim to go and to serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. And guess what? Something happened where we did it because aren't we sitting among these nations today? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. We, we are. we sitting right here. Why? He said, and it, and it comes to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Most High will not fail him, but then the anger of the Most High and his jealousy shall smoke against that man with all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Most High shall blot out his name from under heaven. Blot out his name in where? In the book of life. In the book. In the book. Book, you yeah. say, you, you mess up like that, I'm going to blot your name, now watch. And the Most High shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law, so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the strangers that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plague of that land and the sickness which the Most High has laid upon it, and the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown nor barren, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Most High overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore has the Most High done this unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anchor? <clears throat> then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Most High Elohim of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and of whom he has not given unto them. And the anger of the Most High was kindled against this land to bring, it upon, to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Most High rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation. And what did he do? And cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Most High Elohim, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Any questions? Uh, no, sister. You're not over yeah. here. You made it plain. It's simple. You can't wiggle out this. <laughs> There's no I, wiggle. I have, Go ahead. I have a question. Yes, I thought that when we pass that we sleep and then we are awakened by the Most High when this is all over, but if we've been rejuvenated, I don't understand that. We're still coming back. Well, guess what? You come back, you die. You come back, you die. You come back, so we don't, you die. We don't sleep? Um, I, no, evidently not. Not if you keep coming back, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that because I want to ask you a question in a few minutes. I'm going to get to that. And that's a very, very good question because I know the Scripture says that they that are in the ground shall sleep. They are sleeping. That's what the Scripture says. But according to this, what I'm getting ready to show you, we keep coming back. And, and there's a generation that is now. How, how many times we come back, I don't know. You may only come back once. I don't know. I can't say how many times you come back. But I know that it recycles because if you think about everybody that has been, all the children, do you know how many of us it was? We were as the sand of the seashore. We are a small number as compared to what we were. Now, how often you come back, I do not know. And then I could say some other things, but I'm not going to say that right now. 
I, I, I won't do that right now because if I do that, we going well, that that's to take us somewhere else. But there's more to this than what I'm showing you today, and we will we will cover this. But there's more to this than what I'm showing you, and it's in the Bible. It's in the scriptures. I stay in the Bible, so I don't do the. I mean, sometimes I go in the apocrypha every once in a while, but I try to stay in the Bible because it's right here. And Solomon told you there's no new thing under the sun. So when you were born, you were not new. There's nothing new about you. So my question is, are we the ancestors? Who do we come back as in the final end? Good question. Who will we come back as? That's a good question. I wish I knew the answer, but I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm getting ready to show you what he showed me. Because it's been here and I done read over. Here we go. You ready? Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now watch. This is Moshe talking to the children of Israel. And I'm going to read this nice and slow. And I want you to tell me what you get from it. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. Now he's talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to our ancestors. The blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Most High thy Elohim hath driven thee, and shall return unto the Most High according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, what does that mean? I'm going to read it to you one more time, real slow. No, don't say nothing, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. And it shall come to pass. Now imagine, he is speaking, he's got all the captains and the officers and the tribe leaders and the children and the wives and the servants and everybody. Remember, I read you that. They were all standing around. He said, if you keep the covenant and the oath, this is what we're going to do. Now he's further in the conversation, and he's saying, it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse, hold on, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Most High, thy Elohim, had driven thee, and thou shalt return unto the Most High, thy Elohim, and shalt obey his voice, According to all that I have commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, what does that mean? He was what telling them. Hello? Uh, go ahead, I'm listening. He was basically telling them, it's, it's where we're at now. I mean, once we once the curse is over with, it's we, we know our history of the blessings. Once the curse is over with, we're looking at in the three days, we're supposed to be turning back to him and facing him as a nation uh, and be back to that level of the praising uh, of, of Almighty Yah that we're supposed to be doing. That's true. That's a very good point. But that's not I also, what I also he, get, what, from it, I get from it that the generation he was speaking to then would be the generation. They would be the ones that experienced the full range of the blessings and curses and would be present, scattered throughout the nations, and would be the very ones that would have to return back to y'all. This was there you go, that light bulb just went off. There you yeah, it go. It did. It really did. Just it went off, didn't it? I that see that light bulb going <laughs> Yes, he did. The light bulb just went off, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> and, and you know what? I was sitting here reading it, and it just clicked. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to read it to you again. Now, imagine, let me set the stage, because I don't want to get excited. I want you to get this, because this is meat on top of meat. This, I mean, I'm going to take you down 
a, a trail that's neat enough. So all you babies, please don't choke because I don't want you to choke. I'm not trying to do this to make you choke. But the light bulb went off. I said, uh, we the people. And the, girl, and the girl just asked, well, who do we come back as? We the ancestors. And last week the man said, what do you all just said? It looked like we're going to have to go back to Mount Sinai and do this all over again. And Moshe is talking to us. Be here right now. So our songs were there. Oh, my. <laughs> Say that yes, that's correct. Our souls were there. And we was we was the people. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We was there. Let me read it to you again. When, when I read it and it clicked, I said, oh, my God, it's been here the whole time. Watch what he says. Now, imagine. Let me set the stage for you all. We had, our ancestors, I'm going to call them our ancestors, was at Mount Sinai. Clothes wasn't getting old. Shoes wasn't worn. Everything was normal, and Moshe was laying the groundwork. He said, this is what it's going to be. If you, if you keep the covenant and you keep the oath, you're going to be good. He said, you saw what he did in Egypt when he came through and showed out. You saw what he did. He said, but unto this day is when he's going to open up your heart. He said, he's going to open up your eyes, and he's going to open up your ears. He said, he, he, kept, he kept them closed. In other words, he getting ready to reveal something to you that you didn't really understand back then, but you didn't really understand it now. He said, and you went through the other nations and saw how they worshiped other gods, and they had gold and silver and wood. They did all those things. He said, but if you keep the covenant, you're going to be blessed. He said, but if you don't keep the covenant, he's going to do something to you. Now, watch what Moshe say to him then. That's the sense. He said, and it shall come to pass. What does that mean? That means in the future, right? He said, when all these things come up on thee, what he said, the blessing and the curse. Watch what he said. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind when you think about it among all the nations, whether the Most High your Elohim has driven thee. That means that these people that standing at Mount Sinai is going to come back and be to a point where they're going to be scattered all over the world. Sounds like the transatlantic slave trade. <laughs> well, 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 here we go. Watch what he said. And thou, thou shalt return unto the Most High thy Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I have commanded thee. This day, he said, thou, so that means you're going to be here, and thy children, you're going to have children that's going to be here with all thy heart and all thy soul. You know how old those people, you know how long ago that was before we were scattered? Even one time? Even one time? Let me show you. The first captivity. The first captivity was so far from the time of Mount Sinai that it was nowhere near those people's lifetime. Look, it says biblical account. The captivities begin approximately 740 BCE. It says in 722 BCE, BCE nearly 10 to 20 years after the initial deportation, the ruling cities of the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria was finally taken by Sargon II after a three-year siege started by Salamander V. Now, that's a long time ago compared to the... So what I'm trying to show you is that it couldn't have been these people. It couldn't have been these people. Because what happened to these people in the wilderness? What happened to them? Well, Most of them died. You know, they, they went died back into their land, from what I understand, and those are the same tribes, I believe. Now, this is what I've heard. Uh, uh, those are the same peoples, you understand, that the Arabs took into captivity, the, the, 
northern region, the northern region, and those people got scattered too. You understand? But you know, after that, you can see certain pockets of of who who those certain people are. You understand? All throughout Africa. Now, no, no. Listen, listen. Let me ask the question a different way. The people that Moses is talking to right now are the people that were there. Didn't those people die in the wilderness? Yes, they did. Did they die in the wilderness? No, some of them did die in the wilderness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. The older people that were a part of the children of Israel died. Right, the older ones that came out of Egypt that didn't oh, listen. The That's older why they ones that came forty. out of Egypt, they died. It was right. only, Joshua was the only one that was over 21. That is correct. Right. And, and Caleb, Caleb was the only one that was over 21. All the rest of those people died. Right. But guess what Moses is doing? He's talking to those people who have not died yet. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> They're still at Sinai, right? They still at Sinai. They ain't nobody left okay. Sinai. Ain't nobody left Sinai. They ain't died off. They standing there. They not talking. It ain't Joshua talking to the group that's on their way in. establish Israel as a nation. There was no blessings and there was no curses. There was none. Guess what? Who was the first king? Saul. Saul. Saul was the first king. Saul got in trouble for being disobedient. Israel was still intact as a nation. Who was the next king? Dabi. Dabi was next. Dabi set up the kingdom. We had our own land. We had our own nation. We had our own things. We were living in our own culture. Who was the next king? Solomon. Solomon. Solomon was next. And guess what? Only after Solomon got old and started serving other gods was the kingdom split and the northern kingdom went into captivity. That was our first captivity. Am I right or wrong, Brother Donia? The Northern Kingdom went into captivity first. Absolutely correct. Excuse me. So, so the the so the Northern Kingdom went into captivity first, and then after the Northern Kingdom was gone, then guess what? The Southern captivity, the Southern nation went into captivity second, and they was under Nebuchadnezzar. So let me read it again. When all and it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Most High thy Elohim have driven thee. And thou shalt return unto the Most High thy Elohim, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And guess what? We read this scripture all the time, and we say what? That this applies to us. Because right now we're scattered among all the nations. We have Mm -hmm. experienced the blessing and the curse, us and our children. So if he spoke this to them, then who do we have to be? to be able to experience the blessing and the oh. curse. The same people. We the same people. We the same people. We the same people. We the same people. So, so, so also yes, just listening to that statement when we talk about regeneration, we're also waiting on people that are in transition to, re- to regenerate Uh-oh. to be able to hear that. You bet. Uh oh, you better stop. <laughs> you better stop. What's that? You oh my goodness gracious, you know you better quit. Lord have mercy. And and and, and 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 watch this, watch this. The girl said, Well, how many times do we come back? I don't know, but I know we come back once. These we the same people 
that he's talking to in Deuteronomy chapter 30. We were the same people that was at Mount Sinai when he gave these instructions. So we the same people that have to come back and experience the blessing and the curse, call it to mind when we in the nations where we've been scattered so that we can go back to the Most High and repent and say we saw it. We were talking about trying let us let us share something for a moment. Um, it's not about how many times of regeneration. It's the traveling back, the the returning, the time frame. Yeah. Remember, we serve a a Yah of. So everyone has to be back on the chessboard to hear and fall under that word for it to be Hallelujah. active. That's true. Hallelujah. Right. We had to we had to come back That's on the right. scene to we had to be born again because he said this generation shall see this thing. Shall see. Ooh, hallelujah. That's why he said we're gonna see the destruction of this nation. We're gonna see after the four hundred years and we can go back and claim a five thousand year old prophecy. And then the most I say, you're gonna be the ones that are gonna be the recipient of this. You're going to see this with your heart. You're going to hear this with your ears. And, and you're going to see this with your eyes and feel it in your heart. And then you fast forward to Mount Sinai and Moshe gives us the same information that when you experience the blessing and the curse and when you find yourself driven to the nation. And then here we sit now three days away from the fulfillment of it all. Hallelujah. Watch what he says in verse 3. He said that then the Most High thy Elohim will turn by captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Most High thy Elohim have scattered thee. Gather thee, he's waking them up. Hallelujah. Waking up, waking up. We have three more. We have three more. Um, somebody just called in. I think you're on a tablet or something. Please put your phone on mute because it's interfering with our class. Thank you. Powerful. Guess what? He's never, he, he didn't, he, guess what? All this that he's talking about right now, he's never brought them all back at one time. I was just he's never done this yet. He ain't done this yet. Even when they was coming back from 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 Persia, and they were it wasn't but a few folks. It was only a, a, what a fifty thousand or something came back. He's not done this yet. He said that he said once you realize who you are. Oh, look at this! Once you realize who you are, that we were the initial people in the first place, and then he said that then after you and your children repent and bring to mind. When you gather, when you have been scattered in the nations and you realize who you are, that don't just mean I'm an Israelite, and that don't mean I'm just a Hebrew Israelite, but that we are the ancestors that messed up. He said that then the Most High thy Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Most High thy Elohim is scattered thee. Mm. And the way you said turn... The way you said turn by captivity because who else has been in captivity other than us? And if we wondered if we're those particular people, he said gather thee from all the nations. All the nations. So we're the only people that have been in captivity and scattered yes. throughout all the nations. All the nations. And guess what? We're the only people that understand this, and we have to understand that when they were standing there, they were the only people that was going to experience it. Yep. So I know our souls were there. We was right there at that base of Mount Sinai. And guess what we're doing? Guess what's going to happen? we going right back there <laughs> to do it again. We can make yes, sure. one like the man said. We're going right. We're going to do this the second time. And we're going to do it right this time. Yeah. Watch it now. Watch what he says. He said, if any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, from this will the Most High thy Elohim gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee. He said, and the Most High thy Elohim will bring thee into the land which thy father possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. 
He said, and the most high thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the most high thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. He said, and the most high thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. That ain't happened yet either. It's coming. Hallelujah. And guess what? When they was at the, at the base of Mount Sinai, they didn't have no enemies because they had just came out of Egypt. That's true. So when somebody tells you we the people, it gets deeper than that. It's deeper than anything you could ever begin to imagine. We are the ancestors. Watch. He says, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Most High and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Most High thy Elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Most High will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy father. And thou will hearken unto the voice of the Most High thy Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And thou wilt turn to the Most High thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. He said, it is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Most High thy Elohim, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Most High thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Watch what he says. He said, but if thy heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear. Now he's saying, now if you don't pay no attention to me, but thou shalt be drawn away and worship other gods. They against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the most, the most High thy Elohim, and that thou may obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Most High swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Any questions? Very good. Very good analysis. I, I, I loved it. Oh, we the everyone needs to hear it. We the people. We the people. We're the ones from Mount Sinai. Not only are we the ones from Mount Sinai, but it's also a whole other group that's got to be regenerated again that I believe they already are. You know, and I'm telling you, this regeneration is so powerful. You know, in order for us to have done that, it's powerful. Powerful that we was there, that we stood there and we saw. Can we remember? No, we can't remember. But guess what? We're not going to have to remember because we're going right back to the same location. We're going to do this one more again. Sister Yaina, I think that's why it's important for us to teach the Most High's laws to our children and our grandchildren, because yes. they could be those regenerated people. 
Oh, since you know what, they coming back. Those people, yeah. and guess what, those people who have died, and see, that's why I'm on my way to that thousand-year kingdom, because those people who died, all oh, Grandma and Big Mama and Sister Shirley and Deacon Rock House and all the people that died waiting on Jesus to come and take them to the kingdom, those people coming right back, because those people have to know that they're Israel, and they're going to come back into a kingdom only this time. Not only is Dave Dawid going to be there, but the Most High going to be there, and the law going to be there, and the, and the Levitical priesthood is going to be there, and they're going to have to sacrifice and do all the things that was done in the, uh, in the early world. The only difference between this time and that time is that we will have made the transition from mortal to immortal. And I'm going to show you that. It's in the Word. I'm going to show it to you. It's in the Word. It's in the Word. The whole purpose of this whole, this whole thing, this whole story is to bring back the house of Israel. And I'm going to show it to you. I have a question we, for you. Yes, yes, ma'am. So when we go back um, and, and the law is put in our hearts so that we all will know it, we'll not need to, to be taught it, but the people who would be regenerated from before us, Will they also have it in their heart, or will they have to be taught by us? They have to be taught by us, but by, but that's a whole. That I got so much to teach you before we even get to that point. Okay. I have so much to give you before we even get to that point because we're going to the wilderness, and I'm 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 a bank on that for a minute because I always say wilderness back to the land, wilderness back to the land. But just say. That when we get ready to leave, just say for argument purposes, we going back to the wilderness. That's only a three and a half year stay. That's it. Mm -hmm. That is the end of the Gentile reign, and they're going to get three and a half years to rule the world. And in that three and a half years, the cut will be made because there's only going to be one third of us left in this version of the story. One third of the Israelites are going to make it. Everybody's not making it. But while they're ruling that world, we won't, we'll be in the wilderness. So they're ruling everyone who chooses not to go in the, into the wilderness or who is not uh, supposed to be in the wilderness, rather? Exactly. Yes, ma'am. They're okay. ruling. The, okay. the Gentile nations will still be going on. It'll still be Germany. It'll still be Russia. It'll still be... Italy, it'll still be Rome, it'll still be Iraq, all of those nations will still be rolling. The only thing is that there'll be a one world government, and that's when the man of tradition is going to show up, and the one world rule is going to come, and all that other stuff, but they only get three and a half years. And they've been setting up for this time. They've been getting ready for this for the longest, and it's only going to be three and a half years. That's all they're going to get. And in that time, those that make it to the wilderness, those that make it are going to be in the place of safety. Those that make it. <laughs> One more thing i got to give you, and I'm finished. I want to be able to finish it so we can go to phase two. The prayer of the king. Very, very carefully, watch what happens. First Kings chapter 8. It's about five scriptures. This is the dedication of the temple. This is, again, is Solomon with his wisdom. is praying to the Most High. He's on his knees giving praise to the Most High with his hands up in the air. And these are the words that he spoke. In verse 44, he says, If thy people go out to battle against their enemies, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Most High toward the city, which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. Watch what he says, 46. If they sin against thee, and what is sin? Somebody tell me what sin is. Sin is the any transgression, transgression, of the transgression of the law. The transgression of the law. So he said, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, he said, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, uh-oh, so that they carry them away captive into the land of the enemy far or near, yet if they be themselves 
in the land whither they were carried captive and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive and repent toward their land. And, and I'm sorry, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I built for thy name. Watch what he says. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them away captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thy inheritance, which thou brought forth out of Egypt and from the midst of the iron of fire, of, from the furnace of, of iron, that thy eyes, that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them and all they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moshe, thy servant, when thou brought, broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Yah Elohim. And it was so that when Solomon made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Most High, he arose from before the altar of the Most High from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Most High that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. Who was he talking about? Hallelujah. Hear us. Yes. Talking about us. Yeah, it's us. He was talking about us. Same audience. Hmm. Same people. Same people. I would say when I first came to the knowledge that that I was was Hebrew or an Israelite, I thought, why am I praying for my ancestors? They got, you know, they did what they did. They, well, who am I to pray for them? And they have to repent for themselves. And now I have a complete understanding that I'm repeating, I'm repenting for myself. <laughs> you repenting for yourself. You're repenting for yourself for the things that you have done. 